There. The, uh, the legislation summary will be uh, brief. Uh, Ross touched on a lot of those things. I'd like to first focus on year one. That is uh, kind of the uh, where all the energy is right now for the center. I'll talk about um, our future state, which is going to be addressing your needs as a region of manufacturers and how this center is going to be shaped largely by you. Um, and then, of course, some next steps. So, uh, I have to say, when, uh, when we began into this uh, kind of manufacturing engineering technology venture in 2004-2005, um, the, the unbelievable statistic straight from DOL was that Connecticut ranked number two in the entire nation with regards to high-tech employment. Only California had more um, high-end manufacturing jobs uh, per capita in the state uh, as opposed to Connecticut. And while that was incredible and positive, we ranked 49th out of 50 with regards to educational funding of these uh, careers. And I am so thrilled that the governor, the legislation, and now the state is recognizing that manufacturing is the engine for the state's economy and that it is huge in the state and now there is finally a redirection of funds to support growing this uh, very important sector in our state. Uh, the thing I took away from the governor's visit yesterday was he said, you know, this is going to be good. We are all behind uh, replicating the Nuntuck model which was the, uh, the impetus for the three new centers and he sees no reason to not replicate again and have three more centers after these uh, get off the ground and running because he truly recognizes the importance of getting and growing manufacturing back into this state which was for me very refreshing to hear. So year one is uh, what I'm going to chat about now. One of the big things to recognize is, uh, and I, I come from industry, I was in it for 12 years before coming to QV, and the, the pace of academia is not always the quickest. Um, but I can definitely testify that the new Board of Regents and the, the folks at the state level, um, their energy and their <coughs> their removing of obstacles to get this thing up and running is, is, is pretty remarkable and is at a pretty amazing pace. The request for proposals for this um, center went out in um, November. The proposals were submitted in December. The award was given in January. And the curriculum actually just passed this morning. And the bond hearing for the release of year one funds is tomorrow. So it is uh, a fast moving train and that, that is refreshing. But well, one of the things that the state is doing which I think is, uh, is important is the Isnantuck model which focuses primarily on core metal cutting technology. So machine level, basic um, competencies, manual driven with an introduction to CNC and then the advanced uh, level 2 certificate focuses on uh, CNC and gets into some of the uh, the metrology uh, vetting of what you're what you're producing. Um, all three new centers will adopt the standard curriculum, which I'm about to show you. So year one is very prescriptive. This is where the biggest need is. Uh, in the latest CBIA survey of all Connecticut manufacturers, 78 percent and 88 percent are wishing they could find uh, machinists and CNC programmers and operators. So this is where the big push is for year one. There will be a standardized curriculum, like I said, a standardized student metrics as to what, it, what does it mean to be success, uh, standardized, launch, standardized launch date, fall 2012, uh, no matter what. And um, there's been a, a standardized machine technology center, of course, or manufacturing technology center uh, review board. There's an advisory uh, panel put together of some college folks, some industry folk from around the state, and they will all be reviewed and uh, collaborating to make sure these things stay on pace and deliver 
what's required. So, uh, the year one certificates, two phases, fall offering, basic machine technology level one certificate. It is going to be, um, like I said, very focused on the manual metal cutting practices. So you will have your introduction to CAD, you will have your introduction to blueprint reading, and then you will get into grinding, bench work, lathe, mill, um, and then at the end, of course, a preview as to the more sophisticated um, CNC world of machining. Um, this is a 16 credit um, certificate, again, just approved today. This will sequentially feed into the spring semester, which is the advanced uh, certificate in machine technology. Here we get into more of the um, higher level functions, so all the mathematics required for the um, more sophisticated CNC equipment, uh, as well as the metrology and quality inspection component for uh, validating the production of your piece. More advanced blueprint reading and then of course segueing into the, the turning centers and the uh, lathe and um, CNC operations. For year one, we will have only 50 students as far as uh, the deliverable goes. Uh, this is partly due to the constraint of us not having a manufacturing lab on site that will be in development in year one. But thankfully to our great partner at Ellis across the street, not only do they have the adequate uh, manufacturing laboratory, they too are going through a renovation of their entire school and of course their manufacturing program. So we have been fortuitous in the timing of this. We are aligning the curriculum, aligning the equipment procurement, aligning the programs. So from there to here to you folks is going to be a pretty streamlined process. The metrics for success of those 50 students, 80% graduation rate, 80% retention through the level one and level two certificate. And the definition of success and the reason this is important is we feel the need that the, the reach of this center, in year one definitely, but more importantly as we grow and evolve into what we're going to be, is we want to serve you folks with encumber worker uh, training. We want to address the returning veterans um, population. You know, the unemployment nationally for returning veterans is 16%, which is almost double for the rest of the of the, the population, and many of these folks are um, a perfect fit for this type of career as well as rapid deployment. Um, so, for folks coming from the incumbent worker population, if they see an increase in job function role or an increase in salary, uh, that would be a success. For folks that are coming straight off the street, whether it's a long-term unemployed, whether it's a returning veteran, uh, or some other population, of course, placement into careers in manufacturing. And lastly, um, some folks and companies might wish to continue on and pursue an associate's degree, and we have an advanced manufacturing option that these uh, certificates will feed directly into. So, we like to think that we're going to be handling not only the diverse populations, but the various exit strategies for all of them. This is a jobs bill. This is to get folks into the manufacturing sector and get them in there with the critical skills that are necessary and also um, in need in this region. So, thankfully, uh, with our partnership with Ellis, uh, we're able to, like I said, share their manufacturing laboratory space. Uh, they have uh, five, just under 5,000 square feet, fantastic machine lab. We are going to be sharing the equipment procurement, so 
the funds that we get for this year one for equipment, we're going to be buying or supplementing and sharing in the uh, purchasing of their new renovated space with equipment. And of course, we're working on the alignment and the shared uh, programming, the elements that they focus on, making sure there's a nice transition to the college level uh, machining uh, outcomes. And finally, the, uh, the advisory board I mentioned, we have monthly collaborative meetings and there will be quarterly reviews, making sure everything is on pace and on schedule. And if there are obstacles, there is a lot of support to address these needs because, like I said, the, 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 the pace at which this is moving is, uh, it's, I think it's a fair pace, but it's somewhat frightening for the, for the uh, academic scene. Uh, in the state, but that's that's okay. You know, that's that's what we need. Um, so, future state. You know, this is this is how you folks fit in long term. You know, this is a partnership. Uh, one thing that we were thrilled about, and what we were stressing in our proposal was, you know, we'd love to have it here at QB, but what's more important is Eastern Connecticut needs this center. Uh, Eastern Connecticut Manufacturers contributes two to three billion a year to the state's economy. Um, you know, there's reality and there's perception. And for a long time, this, this particular area is the quiet corner, east of Hartford, east of the river, Eastern Connecticut is rural, it's agricultural. Uh, that has changed, but the word necessarily hadn't gotten out. Uh, it's great to see that now it's being recognized for what it is. And the, the future for this region is, uh, is really exciting. I mean, this is, if there's going to be a migration of new manufacturers into Connecticut, it's going to be in eastern Connecticut. It's where the skill force is going to be, it's where the real estate's going to be, and presently it's where the most economic real estate is. So we're very excited to kind of visualize where this is all going. So next year we will be going through the design and development of the lab on site, making sure it is adequately uh, designed in space requirements, in flow, in layout, and we will be working with you folks to get input on that. Um, we have in our proposal the expanded curriculum. Um, I, I, I hope I did uh, uh, put a damper on things when I said year one is prescriptive. You know, it is, and in my opinion, it makes sense for a number of reasons. Primarily in that that is the biggest gap in the manufacturing education and the manufacturing sector needs. But after that, all three centers will have the autonomy to grow into whatever their manufacturing region defines as the need. So, if you happen to be uh, in the plastics, which is of course very big in northeastern Connecticut, biotech, aerospace, standard tool and die fixturing, mold making. Um, there is a lot of commonality, but there's also some particular um, uh, specializations that might be required. And in our survey uh, for the proposal, the two expanded areas, which are not uh, the only ways we can go, would be uh, inspection metrology, where we would have curriculum certificates, follow ASQ guidelines, as well as mechatronics. Big silly word, all it means is the, the integration of electromechanical systems, the programmable logic controls, the automation, the, the higher end automated manufacturing that uh, many of the companies in this region require. But we want to hear from all of you. We want to hear from all of the companies that wish to be here or that couldn't be here. We want to hear from the companies that we just don't have a relationship with, with because this is going to grow and this is going to suit and fit with what your needs are. This is your center. Um, additionally, we are going to have this great new uh, vehicle for workforce training. So we'd like to explore all the different possibilities of how to utilize this lab space. You know, it won't be necessary for some of your folks to go through a whole certificate program or even a whole particular course. 
but there could be, again, rapid training sessions that we can have small groups come through and utilize the lab uh, when necessary. And we want to, of course, make sure we address that whole component as well. And lastly, you know, we want uh, for each of these specific areas to have local advisory boards as well, that we can have a continuous improvement model. One of the things that we are proud to say is within our curriculum, even though it is uh, prescribed and uh, well defined, we are going to be able to integrate uh, lean manufacturing theory into it. We are going to be able to integrate um, the uh, uh, flexible factory concepts, getting down to single piece flow. This is all going to be at the very front end and woven into all of our classwork. How can we do that? Well, we've been learning from some of our great partners here and we've been externs at the companies over the summer and we were working on writing lean manufacturing curriculum and we have that as a, as a credential already. A machining, a manufacturing uh, center now would be remiss if it didn't actually leverage all of those tools so that the productivity and the continuous improvement mindset uh, wasn't integrated into the whole scheme. So next steps, you know, we're obviously uh, focused immensely on year one. There's still a tremendous amount to get done. <laughs> um, we obviously want to Overutilize if possible. You know, the goal is 50, and there's somewhat a uh, constraint on that due to our capacity. But we are already looking at creative ways to see if we can service more than that with some flexible scheduling and with some other ideas that we're literally crafting day by day. And of course, the outreach. You know, this is the kickoff. Um, like I said, great turnout, but there is a, a, a big bed of manufacturing here that we want to get the word out to so that uh, in year one they're aware but more importantly as this thing is going to literally be coming out of the ground that they get their voice in there. Um, and that's kind of leads right into uh, bullet point two there. Uh, we have a pretty good understanding from all the work we've done with our manufacturing partners to date. Uh, but I am sure that there are other needs out there, there are other strategies out there, there are other company voices that would be very additive, and we want to make sure that we get those assessed. And then lastly, you know, this is from now throughout. This is your center. We want to shape it to be able to meet all of your needs. Um, we are so thrilled, and uh, I have to say, President Tomlin and Dr. DeSonia, our academic dean, are looking at this as a great opportunity for the manufacturers but also the college to now really expand into these areas and it will be a principal area of focus for us. So, any quick questions and answers? Yes? 